Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome back to you. And if you find my videos useful every week, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Liking the video really does uh, push the videos up in the uh, in the search rankings and gets this quality information out to the, really the traders that need it. So please uh, help and support the channel by uh, liking and subscribing. And our approach at Trading 180 is really to combine fundamental and technical analysis. If you're struggling with the technical analysis alone, then um, you know fundamental analysis. You know, the aim of fundamental analysis is to really determine whether uh, currency and exchange rate is, uh, is, is expensive, uh, cheap or at fair value. And there are forces actually at work beyond a technical chart you know prices price action is not king whether you disagree uh with that um you know the, the, this is just the facts price action is not king price action is manipulated but what can't be manipulated over time is value and understanding when for example a central bank is cutting rates and one is hiking rates you want to really you know buy the the currency where the central bank is hiking rates there's no technical analysis that's going to stand in the way of um, you know, central bank movement, risk sentiment movement, for example, it just doesn't happen. So we want to combine our fundamental bias and what we think is a bargain area or at least fair value and then look for the technical strategies, for example, supply and demand um, strategies that we employ to look for buy trades. So um, starting off this week and looking at the week ahead, fundamentally what's coming up is inflation updates from the US, China and India will be keenly watched in the coming week alongside the UK, Norway and Malaysia fourth quarter GDP figures. Uh, US and Australia consumer sentiment, Germany and India industrial output and Japan current account with producer prices, uh, central banks in Sweden, Philippines and Mexico and Russia will be deciding on interest rates. So really the main news for the, for the, for the major currencies are going to be inflation updates for the US um, alongside the UK fourth quarter GDP figures. Um, not too concerned about US and Australia consumer sentiment um, and um, and Japan current account is also um, you know something to keep your eye on as current account really is, is like trade balance and it has uh, really a direct effect on uh, GDP whether you're in a deficit or a surplus so those are the things that we're going to be looking at this week um, or the news that's coming out this week so getting into um, uh, the, the, the fundamentals and technicals when it comes to the major currencies like the dollar we're going to go to the charts and um, see where we are technically and see if we can marry this with some uh, fundamentals and get our directional bias and on the dollar i've been saying this for the past couple of weeks that i wanted to get um long short term on the dollar um, and this is the dollar index which is just a measure of dollar strength of um against the basket of current currencies like the euro the uh, the yen um the pound the australian dollar etc and i expected and you can check last week's um uh, videos that um, I would probably see uh, a stronger dollar and that's pretty much what's happened uh, this week so you're seeing higher highs and higher lows being made and uh, really what all this is just understanding that you want to look for confluences with dollar index so if your dollar index pulls back and you want to get long fundamentally then um, you know that adds you know confluence same thing if you're looking for any kind of short trades on the dollar yeah, look for confluence on the dollar index around the dollar index from a technical analysis perspective. So, uh, looking at the, uh, the 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 dollar fundamentally, um, the uh, dollar morphs into a risk on currency amid U.S. growth hopes. So recently, you've had um, the uh, GDP uh, come out as positive, and you've also had I think jobs has been was was a bit better than expected. So greenbacks inverse correlation with socks has been weakening and the dollar sees biggest drop in three weeks following US jobs data. So hopes for the US economic recovery seem to be transforming the dollar from a safe haven 
asset to a risk on a currency of choice. Um, so the, the, the dollar does kind of fleet between a risk on and risk off uh, currency, depending on what traders would, um, uh, I guess, their mood. And really, from a risk on perspective, you would expect it to... Um, in the, in the short term anyway. And the reason why is because it's got a high interest rate or higher interest rate. A weak dollar actually helps um, uh, uh, GDP growth. So, and it helps exports. So, which is basically what you're seeing that play out. So, there is um, some strong sentiment around that. And um, a few few weeks ago, maybe about two weeks ago, in the uh, in our uh, private Discord coaching room, I did say on the 27th of the f uh, of January that I've been reading a few articles that seem, uh, uh, and there seems to be a bit of a shift between buying euros and selling the dollar in the short term, so one to three month period. It looks like Europe is lagging behind the US in terms of the vaccine rollout, therefore projections for GDP will also lag. So for the short term, I'm looking to see if there are buying opportunities for the dollar as long as data supports my bias. So that's what I was talking about back on the 27th. Um, so the data uh, to look for is growing GDP for the US and lagging for the Euro. ECB are potentially being forced to do something about the unwanted strength of the Euro as well. So we go, you know, we have a, a Eurozone um, channel where we uh, uh, post our fundamental analysis um, and, uh, and basically this means that they may have to find a way to weaken the euro because strengthening currency does is is not advantageous it hurts um, economic growth and expensive currency so uh, the federal reserve has been winning the currency war so currency devaluation over the past six months uh, but that is now translating into potential growth for the u.s economy so again any positive gdp and inflation news from the u.s supports a dollar buy bias for the short term again short term being one to three months of course this is not financial advice da, 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 da. And, I, and i said i'll cover it in the evening's call which I did do so the uh, the guys in our private members room had the heads up and you can see what's pretty much happened since the uh, the 27th on a price chart so the 27th was probably somewhere around uh, here so you can pretty much see 27th of January around here and you can see the dollar has indeed gone to the upside so it was really dollar buyers so now we can potentially look for pullbacks if you want to be a you know a dollar bull in the uh, in the next one to three months if you still think that the dollar may um you know uh, uh, sell off then uh, look for you know confluence of the uh, dollar sells if prices do come back into the supply zone um overall the dollar is actually when you look at the last year's uh, price action you can pretty much see where it is it's at a, a, a really a low and this could be seen as a potential bargain area for the dollar overall so interesting times again i'm probably more more bullish on the dollar now in the short term um but medium to long term bearish so looking towards the um dollar yen and you can pretty much again see uh, the dollar again as I, as I say there's no technical analysis in the world that's going to stand in front of fundamental and risk sentiment analysis you can draw all the supply zones all of the resistance zones you want if you're not on the right side fundamentally then you know you're just going to keep losing so um uh, you know, we were, you know, looking at dollar and I was saying to, again, the guys in the group from long dollar is going to get, be against the, uh, one of the currencies is going to be against the uh, Japanese yen. We're in a risk on environment. The yen doesn't do well in a risk on environment and you've pretty much seen what has happened. So it's now just looking for pullbacks for me anyway against uh, demand zones. We've got some, a few supply zones lingering probably around quite a large area of supply around here. Um, but that's pretty much uh, you know where we are looking for maybe some sort of pullback into a zone before looking at any kind of long trades or if prices do make higher highs and then pull back into a nice uh, demand zone before looking at getting long that's the way i would uh, i would play this uh, for now <clears throat> but if risk sentiment does change let's say for example um, you know there is a lot of uncertainty um, and really when you're look, looking to trade the Japanese yen you really want to see the, the stock market 
um, sell off and not just sell off you want to see the narrative as well as to why it's selling off and if there is a lot of fear then this is actually a really nice place to get short on the um, on the Japanese yen against the dollar but for now I think with global growth uh, the vaccine rollout trade um, and risk on sentiment I think any pullbacks in the short term are going to be really nice uh, buy uh, opportunities for the dollar the US dollar and um, moving on to the uh, dollar yen I'm sorry dollar Swiss and again similar similar scenario and again the guys in the group know that I've been uh, long on this currency pair since probably the beginning uh, of the year I was saying that if I'm gonna get long on the dollar it's gonna be you know against the Swiss franc and you're pretty much seeing what's happened again just any kind of pullbacks for me yeah, and if prices come back down into this zone, it's 80, 0 0.8889 area, and we still have you know bullish um, dollar sentiment, then that for me is a nice potential buy. If you're looking at getting short, again, the Swiss franc does better in a risk off environment. You want to see prices really kind of just come up into that 0. Um, 0.9047 area before looking at getting short um, because sentiment can change obviously that's the first area that you would really want to look for any kind of short trades but keep your eye out on the um, on the uh, um, uh, the risk sentiment and really the news overall moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD has been a bit of a tough one again to trade. The CAD, I'm probably more bullish on the on the CAD than I am on the dollar, but there are reasons to be actually uh, bullish again dollar. And um, I think the uh, Canadian um, uh, inflation rate is actually in the negative from month to month perspective. So that actually an expensive Canadian dollar isn't great. So you could actually see prices start to come up. I think. In the short term, we, if prices do come down into this lower end, this zero point, uh, so it's one point two six area. I think that is a really nice buy for the U.S. dollar against the CAD. Any short trades around here are decent as well. I'd probably say the high of this area here, so it's one point uh, uh, two nine five, and even into this round number, um, this one point three zero round number. I think uh, are decent zones to look for any kind of long trades. I think the. Uh, Again, after this quite a long downtrend, we should see, you know, probably some sort of ranging market. And let's see which one. I mean, it's not really my pair that I'm really looking at um, trading at the moment, simply because there are better trades and easier trades to take. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and um, had a really good trade um, um, in the group earlier uh, this week it was a CPR it wasn't really a, 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 a daily uh, supply and demand trade even though it was it was more of an intraday supply and demand trade but um, prices have been you know chopping around um, between this supply and this demand zone in fact let me um let me go back to the uh, the group and find uh, the trade uh, that I uh, had called so here we are on the uh, 3rd of uh, February, uh, we had a bit of a capture paint relief trade looking for prices to come down into that um, zero point, between that 0 0.716 and 0 0.714 area where there would have been demand breakout traders and retracement traders caught offside as price fails to continue lower and this is a strategy that we use um, consistently as well in the uh, in the group the uh, traders in here are absolutely loving this and um, as we go to the actual price chart you'll see in fact what had happened let's go down to you know, the 30 minute and uh, what we saw from an intraday perspective was this area here as a nice um, demand zone right there that was it so we called this trade it was again between this zone here and this zone the high of that zone to lower that zone and you can see prices came into the demand zone lovely move to the upside so uh, that trade worked out really nice um, on that but from a daily trade perspective let's go back to the daily um, we're in a bit of just this, this this range I would say probably the best area to look for any kind of long trades would be down into a fresher area of demand could also be here as well this uh, 
um, 1.71 round number, but I'd probably prefer um, anything probably a bit below that before looking at getting long. If you're looking at short trades, again, I'd probably look for a fresher area of supply before looking at going uh, short. But again, this currency pair is too you know fairly strong currencies the new zealand dollar has been doing really well recently overall i think the general consensus is for a higher new zealand dollar um exchange rate but i think a pullback into a deeper zone would be more advantageous and moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar um has literally just gone straight from strength to strength not necessarily the best you know tr um uh, a chart to really kind of trade it's been very very um uh, uh just kind of this sideways choppy movement but we did have some interesting uh, fundamental news that came out <clears throat> so bank of england sees rapid uk a rebound with johnson's vaccine push so again the overall consensus is for a global recovery and the, the the currency that vaccinates its population the quickest is due for an economic rebound you know the fastest right but also on the horizon potentially is negative interest rates so we're getting a lot of mixed signals with regards to the pound so um, um as much as there is positive um vaccine news and the vaccine rollout news, um, the Bank of England uh, could eventually um, uh, start to uh, activate negative interest rates. Again, when we uh, look at you know the um, again the same uh, and the same, this is these are, these are all um, uh, articles of the, on the same day, for February. So the Bank of England tells banks to get ready for negative rates possibilities so the banks need at least six months to get the system up to speed and bank of england stresses it is not sending a signal uh um it is not sending a signal the policy is imminent so um i do think they're trying to talk down the strength for the euro if you go i'm mean, sorry strength for the pound i think that the pound is very expensive and in fact like i said keep saying is that a strong pound a rising pound does doesn't help the economy a weaker exchange rate is actually advantageous so i think what they're trying to do is trying to talk down the pound so if the market buys the rumor which it doesn't look like they are at the moment right because traders no longer see and again this is all the fourth of february so traders no longer see negative rates even as boe readies for them so money markets expect uk rates to stay above zero in 2020 into 2022 and bets on cuts have shifted uh, as vaccine rollout lifts sentiment so again the the, the, the central bank and Andrew Bailey is, is trying to weaken the pound, I think, by telling uh, traders that they're too ready for it. But whether the traders believe the Bank of England is something different. So um, very, very mixed signals at the moment, extremely mixed signals. So the pound is a bit of a tough one. I think um, more for now, I'm sitting on the sidelines with the pound and until things do become clearer and, and traders really start to factor in bets um, that they are going to start to cut rates potentially in either to zero or to the negative. I think for me, I might just have to sit on the sideline on, on the pound or really just, um, just watch the pound for now. Again, there are easier trades out there much easier fundamentals out there so um that's where we are with the uh with the pound um looking at this from a pullback perspective i probably would expect some sort of pullback at some point again if we're looking for supply zones um, there's really nothing until we get to the 140 area there are for a lot of forecasts um that that do talk about the pound actually reaching the 140 area and i do think that if the pound does reach the 140 area i think there will be a lot of um uh, uh, profit taking going on and that may be a decent shorting opportunity but i want to see some sort of fundamental catalyst for the um for any kind of shorts on the british pound as far as the long trade is concerned i guess the path for least resistance is to the upside so any pullbacks into this area of demand where you've got also an area of resistance resistance support so this would be that 135 round number i think is decent for a uh, to attempt a long trade on the uh, on the uh, pound dollar but again this currency pair isn't necessarily on my list of uh, currencies to even think about trading there are 
lots of easier trades out there. And in fact, I do think probably um, the, the, the dollar may have, you know, the dollar, it may want to strengthen a little bit. So this could want to reverse at some point. Moving on to the euro dollar, the euro dollar um, again is um, uh, I was saying this again last uh, last couple of weeks that I expected the um, the euro to weaken and the, the the dollar to strengthen. So again, going back, I announced that on the twenty seventh. So you can see what happened on the twenty seventh. You can see. Um, uh, What's, what's happened since and uh, also as well I did actually have this area as a nice area to look for buy trades um, uh, potentially if that aligns with your fundamental analysis and again the guys in the group would have got that just by going into our trading videos um, uh, tab and again, this is a members only area. So if we went back to the, I think it was the 11th, somewhere around there, where we had the, um, uh, that's it, the 11th of January, um, we had a US dollar CPR zone uh, buy at 1.1950. So I was calling this trade back on the 11th of January. Um, in the group and um, let's say calling trades because I don't call trades but I was saying doing the analysis on this and that 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 area that demand zone that you see on on the chart was pretty much right here that same zone and I was saying why the reasons why there should be more demand in this area than supply and you can pretty much see what's happened here from a technical analysis perspective but fundamentally I do think that the uh, this is I think I'm, I'm more looking for sell trades again if prices can come back up into that zone for me the dollar is the uh, probably more the fundamentally dominant trade so I'm looking for short trades in and around um, this area from a daily uh, supply and demand perspective also as well um, just looking at um, some fundamental news on the euro so markets uh, euro optimism losing its mojo as strategists make a bearish turn so uh, Nomura unwinds the longs and Deutsche Bank says euro now headed to 1.18 options traders near the most bearish on the euro since June so after surging this year to the highest since 2018 against the dollar that euro is losing its luster and strategists are beginning to pull back on their bullish views yeah so um again uh at trading 180 we stay ahead of the curve which is this was the 3rd of february i made the call to really kind of get um short on the uh, euro and long on the dollar on the 27th of january and um again it's just understanding fundamental analysis and once you understand fundamentals then you can make you know the best types of uh, decisions to try and uh, to capitalize right so um uh, we're in alignment with the with the banks. Any kind of pullbacks to areas, either intraday uh, supply and demand zone setups, or you know daily supply and demand zone setups, is where you know uh, traders in the group will be looking to get uh, short on this. Again, anything can happen. This can go higher, and if you did make some money on that, brilliant, excellent. But you may want to start to look to take profit potentially. Um, you know into this supply zone because I do think prices will start to reverse around these areas here unless we get some really positive news for the euro that would be the uh, um, uh, where uh, you know things may start to shift but I think in the, again the short term we're looking at probably more long dollar and uh, short euro moving on to the euro yen uh, euro yen last week we did get um, decent sell off of that fresh area of supply so anyone who got in on that brilliant uh, trade to the, to the downside a good you know couple of hundred pips maybe um, and now we've bounced off of this demand zone for me uh, this you've got two kind of weak pairs I'd probably say the Japanese yen is the weakest out of the two so again just really looking at demand zones any kind of pullbacks into demand you can pretty much see what's happened here prices came down in and uh, rallied to the upside so uh, from as I think from a support and resistance perspective I think um, there is probably the the area probably looking for any kind of um, 
any kind of uh, long trades if prices can pull back into this 126 round number I think that's actually quite decent for a buy trade sell trade the freshest area the areas when it first touches is always the best area second touches are okay but not as good as the uh, first touch so unless prices really come up to this area here and start to look and you want to be a buyer of the Japanese yen and risk of sentiment comes into the market then um, you know that would be really where your confluence is uh, moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and um, again a really nice uh, trade setup um, in the uh, uh, I think we posted in the group nice trade setup there and prices have literally gone again and about 100 pips or so um, bounced off of where we had the uh, supply um, sorry the uh, 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 support zone right here from last week's analysis pretty much to the T really nice um, and uh, yeah pretty much if, if, if prices no one knows whether prices are going to go higher but that was definitely an area to look for some long trades on you know the lower time frames really nice now we've got a bit of a supply zone there and um, also as well we are prices currently are at a probably about fair value or just below fair value so if you take you know where fair value is before between expensive and a cheap area you're coming up to that 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 area there so for me the trade has already gone if you didn't get in somewhere around these lows in this demand zone I wouldn't even look really for uh, you know a buy trade here there's not enough upside potential for me before prices may reverse um, considering where you have to place your stop below there and where you've got your upside potential if one if a one-to-one -one is good for you then maybe so but for me one-to-one um, -one trades are not where my head is at I'm looking at you know much bigger uh, trades and better risk reward before I put any money into the market so um, we do have at the moment another demand zone right there I think if prices do pull back again um, then I think the lower area, I think here this um, 75 round number is a really, really nice target for um, the uh, and a potential uh, uptrend. If you're looking for any kind of uh, sell trades, again, I'll probably say that the, the higher area of this, uh, this zone here before looking at getting uh, short. Um, moving on to the Australian dollar yen. And again, from a risk on perspective, I've been saying this for a while, the market has been in risk on mode, right? Global recovery, the Australian dollar um, is uh, strengthens in a risk on a risk on sentiment. Japanese yen doesn't do so well. And you can see pretty, pretty much prices came down into the, this uh, demand zone and pretty much rallied from there. Um, so now we're at a, an area and again, why are you going to get short here just because you see supply zones doesn't mean you should get short at supply and always buy at demand you have to have a bit more patience there's a the trading is a lot more dynamic than that you have to understand why the japanese yen is a bargain here doesn't mean that prices can't reverse here of course there's profit taking going on and there are probably supply orders coming in but at the same time even if you make a little bit of money on this you know it's it's really not the smart Thing to do unless again you have some sort of risk sentiment come into the market risk sentiment change the so risk off or the Australian dollar is um, you know is seen as, as very expensive here the yen is seen as an absolute bargain and even in if that's the case you're probably even looking at some sort of pullback to a demand zone even then it would probably be somewhere around here would be where I would look for any kind of uh, um, buy trades again so any kind of pullbacks into this zone here for me where we've got some horizontal uh, support and resistance as confluence even just below that is nice that's a nice CPR zone for anyone who understands CPRs so uh, that is really nice to the to the upside um, and that's where we are anything lower than that is going to be seen again as a nice bargain um, and then finally looking at gold and gold technically um, there was a zone we were looking at in the group and it was around this 1850 uh, 15 level but prices pretty much went straight through there but what we did do and I was saying this that the, the best area to look for buy trades are you know there we did get a bit of a bounce um, to the upside I think if 
I want to be a buyer, which I really do. I want, um, I didn't really get an entry any, anywhere around here, but if I get something, if prices come down a little bit more into between this uh, 1786 and 1764 area, I think this is gonna be a really nice buy. Really, really, really nice buy. Um, if you're looking to sell the uh, sell gold in the short term, I guess, from the perspective of um, a strengthening dollar, even though I don't believe a strengthening dollar is going to be is the reason why um, uh, 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 the gold is 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 selling off. Um, I, 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 there's inflation that's really going to be coming back into the market um, and inflation is a weakening currency so if, if the US dollar starts suffering from inflation then um, and really uh, for me anyway I'm, I'm more of a long-term gold buyer and from a fundamental perspective we have uh, gold trims weekly loss with US jobs data fueling stimulus bets the payrolls rose less then forecast after bigger December drop, bullion still set for its second weekly straight decline, but gold's road trimming weekly losses. Um, I think there's going to be probably maybe some short term, um, uh, maybe gold sentiment, negative gold sentiment, but I think medium to long term, I'm still bullish on gold. Doesn't mean that because gold is, uh, like I said, because the dollar is, is, is strengthening potentially that, that gold can't strengthen also. So, uh, but for me, this is a really nice buy. If not, if that level does fail, then there are several areas just below that, which we can look for some buy trades. And I think the nearest one is gonna be over there. I think that's where it is. Because we've got hidden demand there, and then we've got another zone, probably all the way around here. So if you take the high, to the low or the low to the high, right here to here. If you understand that, that where prices are between the high and the low is fair value. In fact, this 50% area is fair value. So that's where we are with gold. And anyone who missed out on maybe the move to the upside is looking to obviously, was looking to obviously buy at fair value. And anything below here is going to be considered a bargain, right? And this is the absolute bargain of bargains. Um, gold is mainly driven by, again, yes, risk sentiment, but also there is um, a, a currency devaluation. It's not just the dollar, but basically all currencies have been adding QE and stimulus. And um, again, I think the medium to long term play is for potential buys on gold anyways guys that brings us to the end of the analysis again don't forget to like subscribe share if you uh if you like the analysis i do every week and uh, thank you to all the comments sorry i haven't got back to everybody um just been um, a very busy and um uh, last week so uh, i will try and get back to everyone's comments um if they're worth getting back to of course and thank you for the support keep watching and i'll see you in the next video